Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be taking a look at how to change the engine oil and filter for a 2020 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Now later on in the video I say that the uh, oil capacity is 7 quarts and it's true for this car it is 7 quarts, but I looked up on all data uh, what the fluid capacity for like a charger from 2015 that's also a Hellcat was and it's at 6 quarts so uh, I'm not sure how you would tell whether yours is a 6 quart or a 7 quart Hellcat so maybe just put 6 quarts in and check it uh, before you add that seventh and final quart uh, in our case. So that's something to be aware of. Other than that, this is a very simple and straightforward oil change. There are no enormous hurdles uh, to cover, which is interesting for such a high performance, you know, $80,000 car. Usually more high-end vehicles have, you know, some sort of special tool you might need or the oil filters on top and like a, a canister. But this is a very, very simple. It was very approachable, an excellent way to save money and make sure that your Hellcat is gonna stay on the road for a long time because you know the job is done correctly. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so we got our Hellcat up in the air. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna be working today. Down here, we need to remove this engine cover here. So we need to remove this plastic cover. It's held on with four 10 millimeter bolts and we can go ahead and remove those. Then we can slide the cover towards the rear of the car and then remove it, giving us access to change the oil. So here is our oil pan drain bolt. You can see it's kind of cool. They put a Hellcat SRT logo on the oil pan. It's kind of neat. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a 13 millimeter uh, ratchet and socket, or you could use a wrench if you like, and make sure you have your uh, oil pan catch uh, ready to go because the oil is gonna be coming out. It's also a good idea at this point to don some gloves and some eye protection. Hot oil in your eye is never fun. There we go. So we're just going to let this drain out and once it's done we can replace that bolt after we clean it off. Alright, so I'm over at my workbench. I have our oil pan drain bolt. And you want to inspect it, make sure there's no material here. Wipe that off, make sure that's nice and clean. And then you want to look at the o-ring here and make sure it's in good shape and ours is in perfect shape I see no reason to replace it but if this was in poor condition like in you know in the future this is this Hellcat's first oil change and so this seal is perfect it's perfectly good it's basically a brand new factory um, but you know if you're watching this in the future and this this seal has decayed go ahead and replace it you can get this seal at AutoZone or online I'll try to leave a link down below in the description for it so make sure this is nice and clean and o-rings in good shape and now we can replace it our mating surface looks pretty clean we can go ahead and uh, make double sure of that give that a nice wipe down and a good idea is to get some carburetor spray link down below in the description spray it on a terry towel and then just give that mating surface a nice wipe down with that carb spray latent terry towel just to make sure there's nothing, no foreign material between the uh, seal and the oil pan so we don't get any leaks. There we go. It's okay if it's still dripping like that. It's not a big deal. We can go ahead and replace our bolt. There we go. Make sure that's nice and clean for us. And then we can go get our torque wrench. We have our 13 millimeter socket put on the end of our torque wrench and our torque figure today is 20. So we're gonna tighten that to 20. Now I'm using a torque wrench here. It's kind of an expensive tool to own. I understand if you don't have one, just snug is good. But I figured if I didn't provide a torque figure, everyone would ask. You know what, now that I think about it, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Go ahead and ask anyway. All right, here is our oil filter. It is on the right side of the pan. Uh, it's technically the left side of the engine if you're looking straight at it. It's, it's in front of the passenger seat, basically. Uh, pretty easy to find, especially on these more high-performance vehicles. Usually they put their oil filter in uh, kind of a bare of a place, but this is nice and convenient. It's just there, so let's go ahead and loosen that up. So, our oil filter's on there. Uh, get your catch pan ready, because oil's gonna come out of it. 
sometimes you can break them loose by hand, but this one's from factory, so it's on pretty good. You can use an oil filter wrench at this point. I just like to use a big old pair of channel locks. So channel locks are a little bit difficult to get up there, so I have an oil filter socket. Link down below in the description, of course. It's gonna hopefully make short work of this. Oh, wow, that's on really tight. Uh, There we go. Now I can move it by hand. Jeez. Okay, we well, can just let that drain out. There we go. Go ahead and remove that. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is look up here on the block surface where it mates with the oil filter. You wanna make sure the old seal isn't just sitting up there. Uh, oil filters have a uh, you know, ring seal on there and if it stays up there, it didn't come along with the filter, uh, you'll double stack the seals and then it'll just leak oil everywhere and you're doing the job again and have a big mess to clean up. So what I like to do is grab some carburetor spray, spray it up on there. And then just make sure this surface is nice and clean. And I can verify that there is no seal because you can just see nice and shiny metal. All right, so we have our oil filter here. We have a Fram TG2. Um, I would normally recommend the uh, Mopar replacement. That's what I'll leave down below in the description. But the owner of this car wants to use this Fram and I said, cool. So we're using that, and then we're also using this Mobile One Zero W40. Um, and also, it, I want to point out that uh, there is a um, notification on the service records that say they recommend using Pennzoil SRT certified. Blah 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 blah. I don't care. This is it's still the same uh, viscosity, and it's the same API service rating. So I just think that's a marketing thing they did with Pennzoil. So this Mobile One's going to work great for us and we need seven quarts of this stuff. So we can go ahead and take our oil filter out. Now, if you're at the store, go ahead and take the oil filter out and look at it and make sure it comes with this O-ring seal. If it doesn't have this, obviously don't buy it because you need this seal. Do not walk out of there without one of these on there. And then I'm going to do something that I normally don't do in these videos because the oil filter is mounted vertically. You can do this. A lot of people tell me to pre-fill these oil filters even if it's mounted horizontally. I don't really see how you're going to do that. The oil is just going to dump out. Um, but since this is mounted uh, vertically on the engine, we can go ahead and pre-fill it and we're going to go ahead and lube that um, surface up as well. We're going to take a dab of oil on the end of our fingertip and we're going to apply it to this o-ring. And it doesn't need to be drowned in oil. You just want a nice film on there to make sure it makes a good seal. You can just see on there and I shined that film and then we're going to take our oil and just carefully pour in to about halfway. It's going to fill up and then absorb and then you're going to have to fill it up and absorb. Um, so about halfway, three quarters is fine. You just kind of want it halfway, it's fine. Honestly, I've put these on totally dry and they're completely fine. It fills up in under a second because the o engine oil that's in there is still in the engine. You're not getting every single drop out. So between the bearing surfaces and stuff, it's totally fine. Um, there's a bit in there to keep it going. So don't worry about pre-filling it if you don't want to, I understand. Uh, because the engine oil pump is going to pump oil into the filter and then throughout the engine. So. Don't worry too much about that, but I would put a little bit in there like I have. So we can go ahead and replace our filter. Just like that. A lot of people ask me what the tightness is. It even says on the filter, three quarter turn past tight, but I just go by, it's really as tight as I can with one hand. It usually works out to about uh, three quarters of additional turn once tight. So. So now we can put on our in underside engine arrow piece. And that goes underneath the, the front piece goes underneath the lip. And what's really cool about this engine cover piece is it even tells you what sequence to go in and a torque figure. It is 35 inch pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, so. We're gonna go ahead and use a low setting on my little electric screwdriver here. Go. Teaching you to go in an X pattern. I like that. Cool. 
If you want to use a torque wrench, here's your torque figure, 35 inch pounds. So this is where our oil fill cap is. It's on the right side of the engine, to the right of the supercharger. And we can go ahead and remove that by turning it to the left and lifting straight out. Then we can go ahead and place our funnel and grab our oil. We can add our oil. We're going to put seven quarts in. That is our how much we should put in. That's our oil capacity. So it should be seven. There we go. There's seven quarts. Now we can replace the cap. Remove our funnel, replace our cap, just like that. Go ahead and check our oil level. It might be a bit high because we haven't started the engine. I just want to make sure that it didn't just dump all over the ground or something. So we're going to go ahead and check it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. And yeah, we can see that it is a little bit high. It should be right on that dot there. It should be right there at the end of my thumb. And it's like right over here, which uh, once we start the engine and let it run for about 45 seconds, that level will drop. I just want to make sure that the oil was actually in there before we started the engine. Now we're going to let the engine start and we're going to run it for about 45 seconds. There you go. Now we let the engine run for about 45 seconds. We can go ahead and check the oil level again. So now we can do our final oil level check. Go ahead and wipe the stick off. Place it all the way down, bring it back. We can check our level. And it's a little tough to see on camera, but the big blob of oil is right at the end of my thumb, which is just below that top dot, which is absolutely perfect. So our oil change is complete. And if obviously, if it was low, add a little bit. If it was high, well, you're gonna have to take some out. So that's how to replace the engine oil on your Hellcat. It is uh, fairly simple and straightforward, like I said. Uh, as far as the cost goes, it was not very expensive for the filter and oil, which I've left a link down below in the description to both of those items um, and to do the work yourself. Not to mention, if you take this car to a shop, since it's, you know, a premium vehicle, it's not just a regular Dodge, you know, it's their, it's their premium performance model, they might upcharge you on the labor, so they could probably charge you about a hundred bucks to do this, and this was nowhere near a hundred bucks worth of labor, if you ask me, uh, especially when this is something you could do in your driveway with your buddies and uh, make sure it's done correctly. Thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, I hope I've earned your subscription here today on YouTube. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.